Just about everybody on the entire planet has at some point played Super Mario Bros. Especially if you were around during 1985 when it was released. It was dueled up in a 2-in-1 package with Duck Hunt and was bundled with the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's actually the fourth game Mario appears in. Its predecessors Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and the original Mario Bros. were all successful, but no game, no way, no how has ever touched the success of this beast. It kicked so much ass that it pretty much single-handedly resurrected the video game industry after the crash two years earlier. The graphics aren't the best the NES has to offer, but in the early NES days of 1985 they were pretty damn good. The control is as tight and responsive as any game you can think of, and just blew all the other games at the time out of the water. And the soundtrack contains the most universally recognized song in the history of video games. <laughs> It's a pretty simple song, but it just stays in your head and never gets tiring. There have been numerous remixes and renditions of it, including a live performance by one of my favorite bands, Mr. Bungle. So anyway, onto the game itself. You play as Mario, whose mission is to rescue Princess Peach, or Princess Toadstool as she's known in North America, who has been kidnapped by the evil Bowser. He holds Toadstool in an unknown castle in the Mushroom Kingdom and holds you off with various minions of the Koopa tribe, most of which can be killed or at least subdued by jumping on them. There are a total of eight worlds with four stages each. The fourth stage of each world is a castle where Mario hopes Toadstool is imprisoned, only to find out it's guarded by a decoy Bowser and imprisoned is a mushroom retainer who mutters the famous lines, Thank you Mario, but our princess is in another castle. You'll start off as a small bastard that'll die in one hit, but you'll find power-ups along the way that'll help, most of which are underneath the question mark blocks that are opened by smashing them from underneath with your head. God damn, Mario's gonna need some Tylenol after all this pummeling to the skull. The mushrooms will turn you into Super Mario, making you larger and giving you the ability to break the regular blocks and take a hit before shrinking again. And once you're big, the locations of the mushrooms are replaced with flowers which give you the ability to shoot fireballs. Then there's the star which gives you temporary invincibility. The funny thing about these power-ups is they each have their own means of travel. The mushroom slides across the platforms, the star bounces around, and the flower just sits in one spot. Along the way you'll collect coins which are either out in the open or hidden in question mark boxes and sometimes regular brick blocks. Collecting 100 coins will earn you an extra life and you start out with 3. You can also get an extra life by obtaining the 1-up mushroom which sports a different color than the regular orange and red shroom. In addition to fireballs, you can also attack some enemies with the turtle shells of the Koopa Troopers by stopping them first and then kicking the shell across the ground. Be careful though, because if they hit a solid surface, they'll bounce back in your direction and they're fast as shit. Scattered throughout the game are green pipes which a lot of times house a man-eating plant called piranha plants. Some of these pipes you can slip into for a bunch of bonus coins and a shortcut through the level. In addition to the numerous enemies on screen, another hazard is the clock. You'll be racing against a timer which is located in the upper right hand portion of the screen. If it runs out, you die, and the more time left after completing a level will award you with a point bonus. When the accelerated clock is down to 100 seconds, you'll hear a music cue to warn you that your time is running out and the music will play double time, inspiring you to move your ass. There's no way to save your progress, but after getting a game over, you can continue from the first level of the world you left off at by holding the A button when starting a new game. There's also three hidden warp zones that allow you to skip past a few worlds. This walkthrough will cover all eight worlds, but I'll still point out where the warp zones are. So in the first level of World 1, you can go down the fourth pipe and take a shortcut, but I suggest grabbing the hidden extra life that's in this spot. The rest of the stage is easy anyway, no need for the shortcut, and the extra life is worth more than the coins. At the end of each stage, you'll climb a flight of stone stairs and a flag will be waiting in front of a small castle. You'll grab the pole and take the flag down, and the higher you reach, the more points you get. He'll enter the small castle and pop right back out in the next level, so I guess he stops to take a shit. The second level takes place underground. If you're Super Mario in this spot, you can climb up here and smash through the ceiling and take a shortcut through most of the level. 
Also, if you're Super Mario here, you can either build yourself a little freeway up here or slide your fat ass under the narrow gap by giving yourself a running start. Or if you're regular Mario, you can just run underneath. Then up here there's a hidden one up which you can send down by breaking a path for it. Or if you're regular Mario, you'll have to chase after it until you hit this area with the floating platforms. If the turtle down below is near the edge, try to get to the top platform, then slip underneath the other side to grab the mushroom up here. The red turtles, aka Koopa Troopers, won't walk off the edge, but the green ones do. The manual says that the red turtles are chicken, but I say they're just not fucking stupid like the green guys. Either that or they have no will to live. So if you let the platform take you up, you can reach the first warp zone, which will take you to your choice of worlds 2, 3, or 4. But I'm just gonna go through the traditional sequence, so through the pipe I go. Even the underground levels will lead you back up to a porta potty castle with a flag. Level 3 is loaded with trees. Trees that have huge ass trunks and not much growth, but the tops are firm enough to walk on, so who the hell knows what kind of trees they are. When you get to this Koopa paratrooper, either jump off him when he's up high, or just blast him out of the way. You won't get much of a boost out of him and you'll fall to your doom if you jump on him too low. So yeah, there are red paratroopers and green paratroopers. The red ones fly vertically while the green ones fly horizontally, or hop like a rabbit. After creeping through, you'll hit the first castle level of the game. These castle stages contain lava pits, fireball streams, and balls of fire popping out of the lava. Bowser basically decorated his castles with the theme of hell. A funny thing though is that with the exception of the final castle, the regular living enemies won't make any appearances except for the occasional piranha plant. The fireball streams move pretty slowly so just wait for them to clear before passing. When you get to the area where there's one above and below, wait till the one below is just parallel to the floor and you'll have enough room to jump over. When you start closing in on Bowser, you'll start seeing blasts of fire coming towards you, increasing your suspense. Now there are a few ways to defeat Bowser. First off, you have to avoid his fire breathing. When he does his jump, you can either sprint underneath him or jump over him, hitting the axe at the end which will take the bridge down and he'll fall to his death. If you have fireballs, you can just stand back and give him 5 shots which will kill him and reveal him as a Goomba in disguise. Each world has a different enemy playing as the decoy. So yeah, save the mushroom retainer, and since the princess is in another castle, it's on to world 2. Toward the beginning of the first level, there's a hidden one up right here, but it'll only work if you got all the coins in the third level in world 1, or if you took the warp zone here. When you get to this set of blocks, smash the one in the middle to find a vine that'll send you up to a hidden area in the clouds where you can nab a bunch of coins and take a shortcut. When you come back down, you'll get to the springboard thing that'll propel you up to the top of this stack of stones, but if you simply land on it, you won't get enough of a boost. Pressing the jump button at just the right time will send you up, but only if you jump on it directly from the ground. If you bounce on the spring and try to spring up on the rebound, you'll need to press up along with the jump button. It's kind of confusing, but you should be able to pull it off. If you have a hard time with it, just smack the hidden block up here and hop up. The second level takes place underwater, and this is a whole different control mechanic. There's no power-ups or anything in this level, and you can't stop any of the enemies, so you have to swim to avoid everything. Unless you have the fireball, then you can blast everything. The jellyfish, aka bloopers, tend to swim on a diagonal and then sink down if they're above you. If you're above them, they'll just follow you. There are also flying fish patrolling the waters. The red ones are faster and the grayish ones will sometimes shift their vertical position a bit, but they all usually stay in a pretty straight line. When you get to these pit areas, the water will suck you down, so if you swim down or grab some of these coins, be prepared to mash some buttons to get out. You'll swim up the pipe and move on to the third level, which takes place on a long ass bridge, presumably above water cause a shitload of flying fish from the last level leap up in a very impressive height. They get a lot of hang time and tend to appear from the left and right side, so try to stay in the middle and keep a steady pace. Be patient and keep an eye on the fish, letting them fall before you make your jumps. There's never any more than three fish on the screen at once, so keep that in mind too. Eventually you'll get to the castle on the fourth and final stage of this world. Right off the bat, you're greeted with narrow platforms and introduced to the flying balls of fire for the first time in the game. Let them fall back into the lava before jumping. When you get to the fork here, take the low road as there are less fireball streams down there. Be careful jumping across these fast moving platforms. Give yourself some height on the first one so you have time to time your jump accordingly without hitting the fireball stream. Bowser's a little bit different here because of the brick platform above. Jumping over him is almost out of the question due to all the shit above you, so either run under him, hit him with fireballs, or break your way through the top and walk right over him.